Leading our news tonight, New Zealand Foreign Minister Murray McCulley's Pacific visit last week proved beneficial for some islands and much support was given to the new government for its role in encouraging private sector development and its tourism development approach for sustainability. Minister McCulley said that New Zealand is committed to working closely with government, private sector and community partners in Niue to help raise the island's full tourism potential. It's entirely fair for Premier Talangi to say uh, if you don't front-end load our budgets for, with enough capital to be able to do the things that are going to make us self-sustaining, then we're always going to be asking for uh, a handout from New Zealand. He said we don't want a handout, we want a hand up. Well, uh, my sense is that uh, to hear him talking today about uh, being self-sustaining in five to ten years, I think that's a good goal to have. I think it shows a huge amount of confidence in what's going on. Tourism alone won't do it. Um, I think uh, some other strings to the bow as well. But um, I, I admire the confidence and uh, I admire the determination to succeed. I think it's great to see. Now, one of our biggest issues is the population, and we yes. know there's 25,000 new Wayans in New Zealand. Uh, what are some of the, the things that you could perhaps tell them to encourage them to return back home or send other people that want to live in Niue? Oh, look, I, I'm sure that um, uh, this development will get a momentum of its own. I think that people will uh, see that things are going ahead and that they can earn a good income by being here in Niue. So I think you'll find some of the Niue community in, in New Zealand will gravitate back here, if not for... Uh, for the lifetime, certainly for some time. Uh, I think others will uh, want to come here, and the Premier's told me stories of uh, New Zealanders with no obvious new and connection to be looking to invest here because they can see that other people are investing, particularly your government. So um, I, I think that there are issues that need to be managed carefully around um, you know, how many, how many uh, non new you bring in to provide the labour force and that sort of thing. Premier is very sensitive about that. I know government's very sensitive about that. And uh, it's just something that's going to have to be handled with some care. He also said that New Zealand is pleased to contribute both expertise and infrastructure to support growth in the tourism sector. This year we've seen the uh, uh, prospect of quite a big injection into your economy, uh, uh, increase in the new way consumption tax as a result of that. Uh, I think that uh, it's all part of becoming self-sustaining and uh, by April, May of next year I'm looking forward to coming back here and just seeing what the, uh, the new 20 rooms are going to look like and the refurbished facilities. Now you, you also brought a delegation of uh, rugby yes. um, greats here to, to Niue. Um, any, uh, any plans to perhaps bring more in the future? Because I know you, as you heard this morning with Niue being uh, rugby lovers. Yes. Well, one of the reasons that I went on the Pacific Mission this year with uh, Rugby World Cup Ambassadors uh, was because I thought that we should be sharing this event with our friends in the Pacific, particularly those that play rugby, and I know Nui rates amongst those. Uh, I've had firm instructions from the Premier that uh, Puri Wepu is to be chosen for the All Black team, and uh, I'll carry that instruction back faithfully to the All Black uh, coaches. And who are you hoping to win, one from the Pacific or New Zealand? Oh, no, I'm, I'm uh, uh, determined that we give our team the best chance of winning. We haven't won the Rugby World Cup for 24 years. We're due a win, and... Uh, Home is uh, going to be a good place for our guys to, to play. But um, New Zealanders are looking beyond just who wins and who loses. Uh, we're going to have 85,000 additional visitors. We're going to have 2,000 additional me international media in New Zealand. It's a great chance for us to show our hospitality, to show our many fine tourism assets and uh, promote, promote ourselves as a good place to do business. So we're looking at all of those aspects as much as we're looking at our success on the field. And are you planning on making this trip again next year? Uh, yes, I do. I, I want to come back here again next year, and uh, I think that uh, one of the things that I would like to see us achieve um, sometime in the next few years is to get a second weekly flight coming to Niue. I think that uh, there is an element of handicap about the fact that the flights are weekly. Um, some people will say, well, that's too long just to be out of circulation. I don't have a, an option of getting home if I need to. I think getting a second flight um, is perfectly achievable. Uh, in, in the next couple of years and that would be uh, my hope that I'll, I'll be around to see that happen. Real value and potential for the local community both in terms of employment and associated commercial opportunities in tourism services, he said. With Minister McCulley's brief stop in Niue, much of his time was spent touring some of the New Zealand aid funded projects around the island, including a mock opening of the new tourism centre. 
Prior to the opening of the Tourism Centre, international media posed questions at a media conference to Honourable Tokitalangi and Honourable Murray McCulley. More so with Premier Tokitalangi about Niwi's development and relationship with New Zealand. Premier Talangi said that Niwi does wish to be self-reliant. I'm very pleased indeed that uh, we've been able to get some money to help us develop our tourism industry and grow the uh, economy here. How important are the changes in the new regulations? Very, very important because I believe that we can become self-sustaining in the long term and this is part of the start of doing that. We'll have to look at some of the other assets we have, including the sea assets, to ensure that in fact we can develop all of them as part of portfolios that we need to develop to help us to build the economy here. So you're looking at a probably about three or four things, the sea, the tourism, uh, the trust fund, and some of the other sovereign assets that we have, including, for example, the uh, sale of coins and stamps um, that uh, we, will, we will start building that or using that to build, if you like, the portfolios that we need to put in place to enable us to be self-sustaining in the long term and reduce our dependence on New Zealand assistance to new way. We should be strengthening the infrastructure in government, not necessarily the public service numbers, but the uh, infrastructure that we need to put in place, such as power and water and, and so on, to, to, to help sustain the, uh, the, uh, the tourism industry that we're, we're building. Well, we're looking at the present moment at about 20,000 tourists a year, and we're looking at the exclusive end of the market. And I believe that, plus uh, some of the other assets we're looking at uh, leveraging to try to make some more money out of them, yes, we, we, that, that, that would be the target, 20,000 tourists a year and so on. We're building up to about 6,000. The, uh, the introduction of the A320 means that we've got another 40 uh, seats that we've got to sell. The planes have been full over the past three weeks. In other words, we've got about 160 passengers coming in and going out, obviously. So the numbers are starting to really build up, and I'm very pleased with that. And you say that you're catering for the sort of top end? Of no, eventually that's what we want to do. We want to make this place an exclusive one. We don't believe that we should be increasing the numbers to the point that you have in some of the other destinations around the Pacific. I don't believe that we, we can cope with it. I, it's a lifestyle thing. As far as I don't believe at the present moment there are, there are simple and easy answers to people leaving. By the same token, you don't have an easy answer for the young people leaving your regions in New Zealand and going to the cities. So therefore, we've got to build a strong economy here and hope that we will attract them to come back. Honourable Murray McCulley spoke of New Zealand's wish to develop Nui's assets. I'm tremendously uh, heartened to, to hear the uh, very confident tone of the Premier's report this morning. Uh, it was a couple of years ago he la laid down a fairly tough sort of challenge to the New Zealand Government to um, sort of meet him halfway in uh, ensuring that there was a long-term view about uh, developing the assets, uh, particularly tourism assets here. Uh, we met the challenge with the Premier uh, and uh, you'll see the matter by uh, about to start its expansion work. Some of the refurbishment work has already been completed, but uh, the, the numbers are already starting to pick up. There's a confident tone about the reports we've had this morning, and um, I just want to commend the Premier for the strong leadership he's brought to make um, this process move forward so well. Not even questions of inadequate operational transactions could deter the leaders' wish for a more efficient working system. We will bring you more on this story in our future news bulletin. A new phone product from Telecom Niue was launched last Friday by Honourable Premier Talangi and Minister Makali. Director for Telecom, Mr Duturi Hacker, called on both dignitaries to receive the first use of the new mobile phone produced by Telecom Niue and explained the jump from analog capabilities to GSM. We have come a long way since 1996 when the analog mobile phone system was installed and communication via satellite was uh, implemented. So today is a significant milestone for new communications development as it marked the soft launch of the GSM mobile phone network friend name Roxel Mobile. All breaths were held as Minister McCulley tried out the phone which rang on the first attempt to the delight of the crowd present at the Falafone. 
the new mobile phone was a hit, as many anticipated the usage that has been a long time coming. Director of Telecom Tuli Hacker said, Telecoms has two types of mobile phones that can be purchased from Telecom, one for $50 and the other for $100. The cost of a SIM card would only set you back by $34 with a $5 credit included. A cost of a phone caller is, however, a little higher than what customers have currently. Another feature that will be favoured by many is text messaging. Many youngsters cheer the new arrival and some said they cannot wait to purchase a new mobile phone to text friends. The full launch of the mobile product will take place in the near future once the final cables of the fibre optic cables are laid. A damaged stay wire accidentally cut by a public works department vehicle last Friday prompted an emergency power shutdown yesterday affecting the southern side of the island. Power staff were tied up working on the wire located at Funakula, only metres across the road from the Public Works Department. The urgent power cut affected areas starting from Kaimisi to Wila all the way around the southern side of the island to Hakupu. Advice from the Newer Power Corporation is that members of the public should take caution when around wires that are broken, especially when located near to any power supplies, and not to attempt to fix the problem but to call the Newer Power Corporation as soon as they notice these faults. This message comes as a concern mainly for public safety. A total of 16 criminal cases were brought before the local courts last week. There were a range of offences presented by the Newer Police Department, a majority of them motor vehicle and road violations. Five counts of driving a motor vehicle with excess breath alcohol one person was acquitted, one case adjourned to the next local court sitting, two people were convicted and fined $150 to be paid in two weeks, and one person was served a prohibition ban for six months not to purchase or consume alcohol or frequent places where alcohol is served or public gatherings in that category. Two cases were eventually dismissed and two cases of assault adjourned to the next local court sitting. One count of willful mischief to property was convicted and fined $50 to be paid in two weeks and $20 restitution. The next local court sitting will be held on the 2nd of August. Last Saturday, Halamahanga was immersed in a sea of yellow, celebrating the environment and solar power of the sun. Despite the dreary weather, Newer Primary School was brightened up by residents of Olofi South, dressing according to theme and setting up food stores overwhelmed by different flavours and aromas. But the day would only be made official with the village theme song to open up and what would be a breathtaking display. Tama Aliutu brought on the storm, earthquake and tsunami as they rocked away to different sounds. Some members of the community also made the special trip from near and far to be part of the show day hype. And the festive mood was reflected in the songs and dances. From food to entertainment, Youngsters of Alufi Tonga displayed dances that they have been practicing for a few weeks, playing their own instruments and singing along. The J Love Family Band put on a surprise performance to showcase the musical talents and abilities of the Hekesi tribe, each taking up an instrument and making it their own. But the message on the day was that it's not about the money but the fun of the day. The crowds were entertained, the food kept coming, and Alufi South delivered yet another spectacular show day. And those are our news stories for this evening. We do hope you can join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.